basically on the immoral intellectual roots of uh, libertarianism. Yeah, non-aggression. Don't initiate force against innocents. How immoral. Ian Milheiser on the line with us. He is the uh, the uh, constitutional policy analyst at the Center for American Progress, the editor of, of uh, Think Progress. Yeah, heaven forbid you should have on someone from, like, the Mises Institute or someone else who actually understands libertarian philosophy. No, let's just have on someone who's as opposed to it as I am so we can make up whatever crap we want. It started out where, like, I wrote this piece about Rand Paul. Not a libertarian. And, like, his notion that civil rights laws, or at least many of them are unconstitutional, and that private businesses should be allowed to discriminate as much as, as they want. The problem was never that businesses were allowed to discriminate. They were forced to do so by Jim Crow laws. The Republicans have been trying to get a Civil Rights Act passed since 1954's Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka. Democrats had been opposing it tooth and nail. When they tried getting the 1957 Civil Rights Act passed through Congress, the Democrats filibustered it. What passed was a very watered-down version. So when the 1964 Civil Rights Act was being debated, Democrats tried other ways to kill it. One way was to put in this anti-business section, which no one in the civil rights movement had asked for because they knew businesses weren't doing this on their own, they had been forced to do it by the law. No, the sole purpose of this section was to try and make the act so odious that it wouldn't pass. It didn't work. So now Democrats are having to try this bait and switch, trying to claim that they had to put it in there to stop those racist businesses when they really put it in to try and stop the act from passing. And I was trying to figure out, like, what are the intellectual origins of this man's philosophy that would lead him to, you know, such a strange view? How about just a knowledge of history? Businesses started catering to blacks immediately after the Civil War. Racists in government didn't like that, so they passed laws to stop it. Why do you think they were called Jim Crow laws? And in the process of this piece, this guy... Herbert Spencer. Spencer died in 1903. He's hardly a household name, but he's the father of social Darwinism. Lie! 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 There is no sense that Spencer ever defended what people refer to now when they use the phrase social Darwinism. Eugenics, welfare, centralized economic planning, you know, stuff that progressive Democrats favored. What Spencer was talking about was a Darwin-esque process of improvement through competition, where a successful competitor means that you either adopt their improvements to survive, or you go and do something else. And in that way, competing individuals and firms improve the well-being of all of society. So remember this next time so-called progressives claim to be in favor of competition. In fact, Spencer very much encouraged charity, something the social Darwinists were against since humanitarian impulses supposedly interfere with natural law. And Spencer was opposed to it being done through government force, which was a big tool of social Darwinists. Social Darwinism is the idea that essential that you know certain people are defective and we shouldn't provide them services and we should just allow them to starve and die. Again, Spencer was very much in favor of voluntary private charity to help them. But this is the mindset of the state cultist. If the holy all-powerful government doesn't do it, it can't get done. Never mind the fact that America has by far the highest level of voluntary private social spending in the world. The Cato Institute was this, uh, which is probably the flagship libertarian group in the country. Right. Really? So, not the Mises Institute. Not even the Libertarian Party. Yeah, cherry-picking much? It's a, a co-funded group. <laughs> yeah, you guys are still pretending that's at all relevant. Are you ever going to get to why libertarianism is immoral? And, like, that was when I knew I, I hit pay dirt. Because, you, you know... If this guy's just some random long-dead crank, why would you care if I criticize some random lo long-dead crank? Maybe because you lied about what he believed? Maybe some people believe that truth matters? And that it's not okay to just make up crap in order to demonize people you don't like, like you do? The fact that they are fighting so hard to, like, 
cover up what this guy means makes me think that, uh, you, you know, they, they, you know, I think confirms my accusation that they look to him for inspiration. That's not how it works, moron. Confirmation would mean that your logic holds up, and it doesn't. Pissing people off by lying doesn't make you right. It just makes you a liar. Right, and you're also citing Sir Sir John Galton, as I recall, or Sir Herbert... Francis Galton! Fuck, Hartman, do you know any history? Francis Galton was a prominent scientific figure at the time. He made a lot of advances in statistics, including correlation and regression to the mean. He demonstrated the wisdom of crowds. He coined the phrase nature versus nurture and really kicked that debate into high gear. He developed a classification method for fingerprints, demonstrating that each of them should be unique and really gave a boost to forensic science. He was an early figure in meteorology and devised the first weather map. All sorts of things. Yeah, he was Darwin's cousin. I mean, he is, a, you know, another odious figure who has less of an influence on libertarians than, than, than Spencer did. Mm. You know, Galton is the father of eugenics. Oh, for fuck's sake. Galton developed methodology for studying what human traits were hereditary and could be passed on versus what were environmental and couldn't be passed on to a child. What's interesting about eugenics is, I mean, eugenics was horrible. Eugenics was the idea that, like, you prevent people that he deemed defective from breeding so that they wouldn't pass on these, these traits. That was the progressives that did that, as I've covered in several videos. World War II discredited that concept, but you people didn't change your policies one bit. You still argue for eugenicist policies, including minimum wage, progressive income tax, social security, etc. You've only changed the rhetoric you use to defend it. It would be easy to think that you people were just useful idiots defending them because you didn't know any better, but when you engage in deliberate lies in order to make it seem like libertarians were the eugenicists, that smacks of desperation. It implies that you know perfectly well that your policies are the policies of the eugenicists, and instead of repudiating those policies, you have to try and cover it up by pointing the finger at someone else. We were sterilizing Native American communities. Sterilization of Native Americans and other undesirables was a progressive policy put in place by Democrats. I mean, I don't want to lay eugenics necessarily at libertarian feet. Eugenics is antithetical to libertarians. It's a complete violation of the non-aggression principle. You guys haven't said one word about that or even tried to define libertarianism. Gee, I wonder why. And why don't you look at actual historical libertarians like Murray Rothbard? Maybe because you don't wanna? Because in his book, The Progressive Era, Rothbard pointed out, A third way, often promoted in the name of science, was eugenics, an increasingly popular doctrine of the progressive movement. Broadly, eugenics may be defined as encouraging the breeding of the fit and discouraging the breeding of the unfit, the criteria of fitness often coinciding with the cleavage between native white Protestants and the foreign-born or Catholics, or the black-white cleavage. In extreme cases, the unfit were to be coercively sterilized. He also pointed out that, contrary to this liar's claims, the founder of the American eugenics movement was actually Charles Benedict Davenport, a prominent progressive biologist who founded the American Breeders Association. Then there's Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood. She herself said, The eugenicists want to shift the birth control emphasis from less children from the poor to more children for the rich. We went back of that and sought first to stop the multiplication of the unfit. This appeared the most important and greatest step toward race betterment. So here you have one of the most prominent libertarians ever, not only taking a firm stand against eugenics, but pointing out how it's the progressives who were defending it the most. And yet, they don't even mention Rothbard. Imagine that. So the richest people among us are the best, and they're the ones that we should put in charge of everything. Yeah, that's sounding so libertarian there. Newsflash, libertarians don't want there to be anyone in charge of everything. That's you guys! And despite your pathetic rhetoric, the people you guys keep putting in charge always seem to be rich. Why is that? 
By the way, you'll notice I'm cutting out a lot more of the original video than I normally do. That's because this guy spends minutes rambling on and on and on and either being completely incoherent or restating his same points over and over again. What makes no sense to me about the, this way of viewing the world is, you know, I read when I was researching my book a lot of the tracts that were produced in the 1930s when Roosevelt was implementing the New Deal. You know, a lot of businessmen were really scared. Hey, you know who was also scared under Roosevelt? Japanese Americans who were being herded into concentration camps. By the way, you do know that FDR was a eugenicist, right? In fact, he put prominent eugenicist and Nazi sympathizer Frederick Osborne into several high offices. And we also know, because of newly declassified documents surrounding M Project, that FDR had his own plan to rid the world of the Jews. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to believe that in 1936, when it's new and we don't have any much evidence either way, but since then, we've had 80 years of American history. Right. And in those, Ameri those 80 years of American history, we grew to be the wealthiest nation that has ever existed and the most powerful nation that has ever existed. We already were. But how do you explain the fact that the percentage of the American population in poverty before welfare was dropping like a stone, and since welfare, it's been stagnant, if not slowly rising? How do you also explain the fact that we went from high upward mobility among the poor before welfare to millions of people in perpetual poverty? Hmm, it's almost like the eugenicists knew that would happen and that this was the whole point. Reaganomics has been an absolute screaming failure for the last 35 years, and uh, FDRonomics, or Keynesian economics, built this country in, in the 20th century. That is absolutely hilarious to anyone who knows the economics. For anyone who's interested, I'm just going to link to a Tom Woods lecture on the subject, showing how much of a hilarious failure Keynesian economics has been. In 1946, I think it was, or maybe 47, it was right after World War II, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and a bunch of uh, very, very large corporations got together and invented a political party, basically, to provide an intellectual and business rationalization for, you know, business-friendly policies, and they in invented the modern Libertarian Party. Wow! A conspiracy theory! Gotta love it! For those of us who live in this little place called reality, the Libertarian Party was founded in 1971 by David Nolan and a handful of others who were not in the Chamber of Commerce or large banks or corporations. But when you have fuck all to back up your insanity, just make up some crap and you know Hartman's listeners will just swallow it without checking. It was funded by the DuPont family, who was sort of the Koch family of, of, of the era. I... I don't even... Ah, uh, geez, why don't you just say it was founded by the ghost of Adolf Hitler? Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit like and subscribe? And to make sure I can keep producing content, support this channel by becoming a patron. And check out all the other great content here, like this video selected especially for you.